everybody. My name is Christine Hernandez. I am the Livestock Manager here at Heifer Ranch for Heifer USA. And I just wanted to take the time to bring all of you out into the lambing field with me. So we are about 14 days into our breeding season. Out of 126 ewes, we have 85 that have already lambed. So it has been crazy busy, but fun, very successful. Use the 360 degree viewing option and come along with me as I show you all of our lambs. Stay tuned until the end of this video to find out how you can get a free copy of our sheep breeding resource guide, complete with the calendars, checklists, and record templates we use for lambing season at Heifer USA. This ewe that's underneath the pine tree here, she has twins that we will go out and process. And I'll connect you to my handy lambing wagon. So I put all of my lambing kit in this wagon and I can bring it out into the pasture with me. So I have everything I need already out here. And I try and get this station set up as close as possible to where the U is at so that I don't have to make her move. Okay, so I have all my things already out there. I know she is 2016 is her number. So I'm gonna take my shepherd's crick. We're gonna go catch both of her lambs at the same time. You know, we're only, I don't know, maybe 10 yards away from her. So at this point, I can bring both the lambs over here. It's close enough distance where she can see them and hear them. And hopefully she will follow me up to my lambing kit and hang around while they are getting processed. So we have two little boys. And I like to have both of them with me as I process one and the other one waits. That way she doesn't take off with one and leave one behind. So I'll get them both processed and all set, ready to go. And then I'll release them all at the same time. So we'll get a weight on them. This little guy is eight pounds. Right here, mom. These are born today. So I like to give them as long as possible to bond without interruptions. And so we've switched to processing the lambs throughout the day to just processing them once a day. So it's the afternoon right now. So we will process all the lambs that were born over the night and this morning. Everyone that is born this afternoon will wait until tomorrow to get processed just so that we don't interrupt that bonding time because we will put different things on the lambs. You know, they'll get some iodine, some paint. And so we want to wait and do that until their bonding is nice and strong. So they're going to bond through sound, which she is calling for her lambs right now. See, that little baby called for her. Hi, honey, welcome. So this lamb is number 82. It's the 82nd male born this season. And so she was bred to our Dorper Ram. So they are going to get their tag in their right ear. And that just helps us differentiate visually and quickly Dorper versus Katahdin. You're okay. Yeah. So he'll get his ear tag in his right ear. Thank you. Good job. He'll get castrated real quick. And then we need to spray his umbilical cord and paint him and then he's done. So this is usually a pretty quick process. It's a little bit of juggling when you have two lambs, but it can be done. Good job. Okay, I done. So last year we were dipping our cords this year I decided to go back to spraying them. It's just easier. It's all a little messy. Okay, 2016. So we're gonna spray the mom's number on the lamb so that we know who its mom is, who it belongs to, 
in case it is out there calling and, you know, maybe gets a little confused. Okay, so he's done. Thank you. We'll see if he stays there while I do some on this one. Hi. Okay, let's see how much you weigh, honey. Good job talking to your mama. So guys, 8.7 pounds. Good sized babies. You're gonna be number 83. So our boys are getting these orange tags. We just start number one through however many we get. Okay, I'll switch ya. Yes, thank you. I don't want you to run off. And then our females get the yellow tags and they, since there's potential, excuse me, I'm trying to talk, thank you. Since there's potential of them staying in our flock as replacements, we will tag them with the year that they are born. So all of the lambs from this year will get, their numbers will start with two, four. So 2024, and then a number after that for which female they were. So. 24001 was the first female of 2024. You're doing a great job, Mom. I appreciate you. And so we will score our U's on their behavior, on their ability to lamb without assistance, and then on the lamb vigor. And so that just helps us score our U's, let us know how they're doing. Um, helps us remember if there's a reason why we want to put them on our call list or not. So we have some ewes, you know, that they wouldn't be up here with me right now talking to their babies. Do not headbutt me, please. Thank you. Yes. Um, you know, they would actually be running around listening to all the other lambs out there calling, thinking it's them and just going crazy trying to find their babies. Where I, I don't mind her being right up here with me. I prefer that. You know, she knows who her babies are. They're talking. And then I can let them go right here with her. And everyone can leave at the same time. Two. Zero. One. Six. Thank you. Yes. Last side. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and let you both go. Whoa. Okay, so I'm gonna let them go. And I am gonna hang out here and just watch them for a little bit. So that one automatically went to nursing. This little guy's still a little confused, but you know, they've been painted. That comes with a little extra scent. I just wanna watch her and make sure that she knows that these are her lambs, that that scent from the spray, you know, isn't throwing her off at all. They're talking to each other, she's licking them, she's letting them nurse, so that is an excellent sign. Good job, Mom. That is picture perfect, that is what I want. There's a lot of other little babies in here, born throughout the weekend. And we do have a set of triplets that I can go over and show you right now and kind of talk you through what we are doing with them. Good job, Mom. So you can see these two right up here in front of me. They have some raincoats on. So those are through the Shearwell Company. They're biodegradable and they're just plastic coats. There's a, a hole to put their neck through and then a, a slit to put all four of their legs through. You know, their back end is still open so that the ewe can smell their head. The bottom is open so that she can lick and smell their umbilical cord and then their bottom. Uh, I put those raincoats on if it's going to be cold at nighttime or if there's a rain event coming through. And that's just gonna help the lambs stay nice and warm. Um, and then they also need to be drinking milk and that's gonna help keep them nice and warm too. But these raincoats are just a little extra Assurance for us. Hi, 17. And eventually those raincoats, you know, they're going to get 
a little weak and then they're just going to fall off and I can come out here and pick them up um, and it's as easy as that. And it, our lambs are a pretty good size so it usually fits them. You know on our five pound lambs it's a little big but on our eight, ten, twelve pound lambs you know they fit nice and snug. So we'll come over here and I'll show you our set of triplets that were born this morning. And so something else I've started doing this year, you know, triplets are kind of hard. I always give it a shot. Some of them turn into bottle babies. Some of them successfully stay with their mother. But what we're doing this year is we have some of these portable corral panels. You know, it's easy for one person to bring them out here, set them up. Um, we just make a little pen for the U and for her triplets to be inside here and that is going to help reassure their bonding. You know, sometimes it's hard for a ewe to count to three. And so this way, you know, no one can wander off. No other ewes can come in and try and take any of these little lambs. So all of these lambs are really good size. You know, she has a nice udder, it looks full. We will leave them in here usually for a day and then we'll go through the field processing so they'll get their ear tag, you know, they'll get painted, all that stuff that we just did over there with those twins. And I'm going to keep them in here for about another half a day before I let them out with the rest of the flock. Um, these corral panels, like I said, they're light for one person to move. They're also really easy to just scoot down so that we can give that you some fresh forage every day too. Um, and if there's someone, you know, that we're worried about, we can build one of these little panel sections for them. Um, we've also had a ewe that was trying to be a granny ewe, was trying to take everyone else's lambs. Um, so we put her in one of these little pens too. Hey, Christine, who do we have here? Hi, you have a nice little eye patch. Yes. Good job. So these ones were born this morning, so I will process them this afternoon as well. Uh, I'll probably move this pen down a section for fresh grass, and then I will let these guys out tomorrow morning, and then just keep a really good close eye on them. Good job, everybody. So we can go ahead, and it'll just take us a minute to get over there, but we can go see our big flock where all of our other ewes are that have lambed since the beginning of lambing season. Uh, we have about 150 lambs over there with their moms. So we do have anywhere from singles, lots and lots of twins, and we do have a few sets of triplets over there too. If we have a set of triplets where one is significantly smaller than the other two, I'll still put them in one of those pens so that everyone can get that full day of colostrum. And then I typically pull that smaller lamb and turn it into a bottle baby. I am very thankful that I am surrounded by a community of small scale farmers and there is a demand for bottle babies out there. This is Uno, one of my dear guardian dogs keeping everyone safe. Thank you, dear. So with a bottle baby, I'll bring it up to the barn after I am ensured that it has had a significant amount of colostrum. I'll keep it up there, you know, for half a day or a day, get it used to drinking out of the bottle on milk replacer, and then I'll send it to a new farm. I wanna ensure that, you know, they're healthy, they're used to that bottle, that they're gonna be a successful lamb to wherever I'm selling them to. Hey, sweethearts. They grow very fast. So this one in the middle, he looks very good. His number is 13, orange tag 13. So he's the 13th male born of this year. Hi mom, are you coming to find your babies? It's a very good job. So the sheep are going to bond and know each other through sound. 
Okay, so she was just calling from far away. Her baby came to find her. So they're gonna bond through sound and then through scent. And when they get moved, everyone is hollering for each other and it gets very, very loud. You know, and then you give them about five minutes to find each other and settle down to nurse and all is calm. All is right in the world again. So here's one of those raincoats I'll pick up. It's something that I always do. You know, lambs are super fun, energetic. I cover up any potential dangers. So here we have the shut off valve for our water tank there. I just cover that up with a bucket because I am afraid a lamb is gonna jump in there and not be able to get out. I also cover up that water tank so that lambs cannot fall in there. And I give them a shorter temporary tank that everyone can reach. You know, if the lambs accidentally do jump in there, it is short enough that they can be able to jump back out or stand up and they won't be underwater. So this is our lambing field. It has been a very fun, eventful, successful lambing season so far. I'm excited to see how we end this season. Uh, we did leave our ram in for two full heat cycles and then we had a clean up ram do a third cycle. So that is a potential lambing season of 52 days, which can be a long time saying that we're only at about day 14 and we already have so many lambs on the ground. But you know, we want as many lambs as we can. So we, we take that extra time and extend our lambing season. The downfall of that is that, you know, we're getting all these lambs that are born right now, they're gonna be growing really, really well. They're already grazing with their moms out there. They are going to be gaining weight, especially on the spring grass that is growing right now. Any of the lambs that are born later on the year, you know, they're gonna be a little bit smaller in the fall time when it is time to go to processing. So that's just something to keep in mind. Well, thank you guys for joining me out here in the lambing field. I hope you got your fill of the beautiful baby lambs this year. I am gonna go ahead and get a few things set up so that we can move all of these sheep. My end goal with this move is gonna to be to take the ewes out of that far group that have not lambed yet. They're gonna go in the far end of that adjacent pasture. I have an electric fence running through there and then I'm gonna move all the ewes with lambs into this closer section so that we can be back on track with ewes that are due to lamb compared to ewes that already have their lambs. So wish me luck, I hope it goes well. I will have this set up so you can watch some of that progress. But thank you all for joining me. Go ahead and check out all of our other sheep videos if you want to learn more about how we manage our sheep here at Heifer Ranch. Want to raise pastured sheep just like Christine? Head to the description of this video where you can download a free copy of the Sheep Breeding Resource Guide that Christine uses to ensure successful lambing seasons. Then, learn Christine's best tips for easy, stress-free lambing with this video. Or, see exactly how we breed our sheep flock on pasture with this step-by-step -step guide.